Hey there, I'm Jess from Sally Tomato, and normally on our channel we teach sewing tutorials, but for this project we're going to get crafty. I'm going to walk you through the process of how we used faux leather fabric to create a woven fabric headboard. Also included in this tutorial are details about my bedroom makeover. So I wanted this headboard to become the focal point of the room, so I painted and decorated to bring the entire look together. This is a no-sew project which can be completed in a few evenings or a weekend. I was inspired by a piece that I saw on Pottery Barn but was completely shocked by the price tag. I knew that I could make my own for a fraction of the cost and share the process with you so that way you could make your own too. So first let's start by figuring out the dimensions, the finished dimensions of the headboard that you're going to be making. Then I'll walk you through the materials that you need and then dive into the process and the tutorial of how to make this fun project. So the finished size of your headboard will be 25 inches high by the width of your bed. And I've created the dimensions for all standard size beds, so whatever size bed you have, you should be able to follow along and make it custom for you. So let's dive into the materials that you'll need for this project. You'll need three eight foot two by two boards. And I've created a blog post with some tips on understanding nominal versus actual dimensions of dimensional lumber. So I am a novice when it comes to woodworking, so I had my husband, Mitch, help me with this project, and he helped me purchase the wood. So we chose to go with a red oak. You could certainly choose whatever kind of lumber that you want. Pine is definitely more economical, but you might have to put in some more time into the finishing work since pine is generally a rough cut um, type of wood and you might have to do some more sanding to that. Also, you want to make sure that your boards are not bowed. You want straight boards for this project. Other supplies you'll need are wood stain, either a manual or electric staple gun, and a rotary cutter, ruler, cutting mat, and of course, some faux leather or you can even use cork fabric. So I have figured out the yardage that you'll need for each size of bed and it's all determined for non-directional fabric that's 25 inches wide. So I've put a link in the description below to a free download and tutorial instructions for this project. So you have all the details in one spot. Alright, I'm sure you're eager to get started. Since I did a bedroom makeover, in addition to the headboard, we're going to start with the paint. Then I'm going to walk you through the process on how we built the frame, marked the positioning for our strips, and then attaching the strips to the frame, and then also mounting the frame to the wall. This headboard is mounted to the wall, it doesn't connect to your frame of your bed. And then I'll show you some extra details that I added to bring the entire look together. So I hope you enjoy. Hey guys, so it's painting day. Today I'm going to be painting an accent wall in my bedroom. So right here I chose a color that I thought would make the headboard really pop. And I actually chose black. I've never painted black on the walls before or even thought about going this dark. Um, but I have some really fun ideas for decorating and I think it will look really cool when it's done. So I'm going to move away some furniture and get started. Okay, <laughs> so I haven't managed to get very far. I'm going to have to wait for Mitch, my husband, to get home because I managed to wedge the mattress in between the wall and underneath the bed. <sighs> so <laughs> maybe I'll get started on the corners. So what's nice about just doing an accent wall is the taping is minimal. And also, if we don't like the color, then it's only one wall that we have to paint over. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so Mitch and the kids are home, and my almost three-year-old, Jack, say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. He wants to help paint, so let's see how this goes. Grab your paintbrush, let's try this again. No stepping in the paint this time. Awesome, look at you. What do you think, Jax? You like the color? Huh. What color is it? Gray. Gray. All right, just giving you guys an update. I'm done taping. Jax, how's it going down by you? I'm crazy, yeah. 
You're painting there. How's it going? I'm good. It looks great. Ceiling. Paint the ceiling. Hi, you have what? Wow, that's a lot of painting. Alright, let's go get you cleaned up. You did an awesome job. Now I'm going back. Alright, so it's a Thursday night and we just put our two boys to bed. We're in Wisconsin, so I'm out in the garage. It's about 20 degrees outside. <laughs> but he's going to walk us through how to make this headboard frame. We have a king size bed, so we'll be using the dimensions for a king. But I've included a link in the description below this video to a blog post with all the dimensions. So that way you can make one custom to your size bed. So I'm going to turn it over to him and we're going to get started. Hey everybody, Mitch, Jessica's husband. I'm going to show you how to build this headboard frame. So we are going to be using red oak. Uh, these are two by two pieces. Um, you can use any wood you want, any thickness. Um, two by two just seems to work best. Now this is a miter saw, a little bit fancy of a unit. You can do this project with a hand powered one. So you don't need this fancy high end of a saw. I just have one because I do quite a bit of project. So the first thing we're going to be doing <clears throat> is I'm gonna do 45 degree corners. So I have my saw set to cut at a 45 degree angle to the back fence here. All right, I'm gonna stand back. <laughs> now that I have our starting point, we are going to be cutting all the measurements from the tallest edge. So the longest bit. So and since we're doing a king size headboard, I believe it's 76 inches, right Jess? Yep. Lay it out, 76 inches. That is where my next cut is going to be. Isn't that sweet of him to help me with this project? <laughs> I could do it, he's just faster at it. I need practice too. The beauty of this saw is I can switch it both ways so I can cut on both sides. Completed. Perfect. So then we're gonna cut another one of those and then two that are 25 inches high, right? Yes. Double check that I am spot on my measurements. Yes, I am. Quick tip for everybody. Once you were to get one <laughs> Sorry. Piece, start measure. over, start over. <laughs> this is not a quick tip. Yeah, I know. Alright, quick tip for everybody. Once you were to get one piece measured, cut both sides like that, and you already have this piece over here, cut. To make it easier and make it so both your measurements line up, or Perfectly. both your pieces line up, you can just butt that end up to the other one and come over here and use this one as a mark. Okay. There you go, folks. Like that is my line. I'm ready to cut. We have a propane heater going out here, but my hands are getting numb. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> All right, now that we're done cutting the frame off, we're gonna pre-drill our holes. It's always a good idea to pre-drill holes, uh, especially when you're using hardwoods like oak. Wow. <laughs> so this is a pre-drill with a countersink bit, so our screw heads will sit down below the surface of the wood. So that way they are not as noticeable. And we are gonna put them on the long pieces because this is gonna be the top and the bottom. Also, that way they're not easily seen. I'm essentially just trying to aim for the middle of the angle there. They can be as precise or as imprecise as you want. Now that we're done pre-drilling the one board, um, I set them up in this handy 90 degree clamp. You don't need one of these, but it does make life a bit easier. I got Jess over there holding that end up. So all we are going to do is finish 
pre-drilling. So that way we avoid any chance of splitting the wood. This is amateur hour, everybody. And we're gonna run a screw in. Now, you could glue this joint if you wanted to, but seeing how this guy's gonna get mounted to the wall and studs anyways, one single screw in each corner is gonna hold it just fine. One joint done, three to go. We're gonna go. I have picked out a couple of faux leather choices. I'm gonna audition them in our room. So you could certainly get some samples, see how you like them with your paint colors and window treatments. And that's what I did because I couldn't choose. So let's head on over and decide which faux leather color we're gonna put on the headboard. So if you're anything like me, picking the fabric is one of the best parts. And I definitely recommend getting some sample swatches. You could purchase just a small swatch or a quarter yard, a half yard cut, and then lay it against your wall so that way you can see it with the furniture in your bedroom and your window treatments and with the paint color. So I brought home a few colors to audition in my room to see which one I like the best. And for me, it's always best to have it laid out and then step back and look at a distance from it because when you're up close it looks a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and put these against the wall and see which one looks the best. Alright, so now that I have these laid out, this is going to be a hard decision for me because originally I had my heart set on our hazelnut legacy. This has a really warm, natural texture to it. It's really soft and it would have a really high-end look to it, which I was going for. Um, but I brought home two others just to compare and also confirm my choice. So sometimes you go with your gut, but then sometimes you get surprised by a totally different option that you'd never expect. So I'm actually really liking this beige pebble. It's just a nice neutral option. And then I also brought home our charcoal pebble because we have quite a bit of brown tones in our room already with the nightstands and I have a desk and then the woodwork so I wasn't quite sure about the brown. So I think it's good. I brought these home to test out. So after I decide on a faux leather color, I'm gonna cut out my strips according to the pattern and again, you can find the pattern on our blog and all the dimensions on how to cut it according to the size headboard that you're making. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my strips and then I'll show you how to attach them to the frame. All right, Buddy's here to help me tonight. <laughs> so I've got all my strips of faux leather cut. I ended up choosing our brown pebble faux leather. I thought this went really nicely with the color scheme in our bedroom and it's a really nice warm color. And then also the backing on this faux leather is black which is nice because then it looks good with our wall. So here I have our frame and all the strips cut. Again, I figured out all the measurements in the blog post depending on what size headboard that you're making. So definitely check that out. For the king size, I had to cut nine strips and for the horizontal. And then for the vertical strips, I had to cut 31. But you could probably get by with 30 strips. So I'm going to lay these all out, equally spacing them, and the corners of the wood are going to show, so I'm going to start my horizontal strips in line with the edge of the wood, and then once I place the vertical strips, those will begin in line with the inner edge of the wood as well. So I'm going to pencil these out, and then we're going to staple them to the headboard. So here I've positioned the frame with the wrong side up and I have nine of my horizontal strips laid out and I measured the inner 
part of the frame and it comes to 22 inches and my strips are two inches wide so I'm putting a half inch spacing in between each of the strips and I have the fabric strips wrong side up too so then I can just take one of the strips and then wrap it to the back and staple it and then I'm gonna pull it tight and put it on the other end Are you holding it down tight, Jax? Do it. Good job, Jackson. So now on this other end, we replicated the measurements and then we're pulling it tight and wrapping it around and then we can just trim off the excess. So you wanna pull it tight so it's nice and taut, but you don't want it too tight that it causes your faux leather to stretch and curl. All right, so Mitch is working on stapling the vertical strips. So we measured everything out. We started a half inch away from the inner edge of the wood, and then they're all spaced a half inch apart. So luckily the math worked out perfectly, and so he's stapling them all to one edge, and then we're gonna weave them and pull them tight and staple them to the opposite side. And then obviously we're gonna trim up the extra pieces. So it's turning out so cool. I can't wait to show you guys the final reveal on how it turns out. To mount the headboard to the wall, we just used a stud finder to find the studs and screwed it in place. So our headboard is complete and it's time for the big reveal. This is my favorite part. So here are some before and after pictures of our bedroom makeover. This project was so much fun. I love incorporating wood and fabric with metallic decor and greenery to bring warmth, texture, and life to this room. We mounted gold metal sconces, which I found on Amazon to the wall and hid the power cord with a painted cord cover that I purchased from our local home improvement store. I found a vintage clock from Target with a leather strap to tie in the faux leather fabric from the headboard. I added an artificial tree in the corner of the room for some natural color, which also hides a spot that Jax accidentally painted. No one will ever know, right? I actually found the blinds before I finished the headboard, so that way I could match the stain of the headboard to the blinds. Also, I love mixing wood tones, but a general rule of thumb is to have a dominant wood tone and then a secondary wood tone. So in our room, the dominant wood tone is our doors and trim, and then our secondary wood tone is the existing furniture. So I wanted to make sure that the stain and the blinds coordinated with our existing furniture so that way it didn't overpower the dominating wood tone and it brought the entire look together. And there you have it. I am in love with the results. It's been so much fun to share this transformation with you. Simply adding some paint, a focal point, and a few decorations completely changed the aesthetic of the room and my mood when I'm in the space. I truly believe that design has an influence on our emotions and feelings, and so I encourage you to evaluate your space and determine if it needs a refresh too. If you decide to make this project and incorporate it into your home, Share photos using hashtag Sally Tomato and hashtag DIY Woven Headboard so we can see your version and celebrate your makeover with you. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment. Your feedback means so much to us and that way we know if you like these No Sew Project DIYs, we'll make more. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more inspiration and project ideas. See you next time.